Assalamualaikum. Welcome to Millennium TV News. This is Ishra Jahan with the top stories. Obama apologizes to MSF President for Kunduz bombing. Video urges Vice President Joe Biden to make 2016 run. David Cameron vows assault on poverty in conference speech. Migrant crisis EU to debate faster deportations. Syria crisis NATO to discuss Russia air campaign. Now the detail. The US has said the bombing which took place in the Afghan city of Kunduz was a mistake and it was attempting to strike the Taliban. MSF wants the bombing to be investigated as a war crime. Mr. Obama has also apologized to the President of Afghanistan. If it is necessary to hold individuals accountable, that will be done, said White House spokesman Josh Arnest. Mr. Obama expressed his condolences to MSF President John Liu, said Mr. Arnest. In the United States, when we make mistakes, we are honest about it. We own up to it, he said. Mr. Arnest also hinted at the possibility of paying victims and their families a Department of Defense policy. He said he could not say legally whether the bombing was a war crime, but the U.S. goes to great lengths to limit the loss of life of civilians. In a statement, MSF said they received the apology, but it was still demanding the International Humanitarian Fact-Finding Commission investigate. MSF has said it would not trust internal military inquiries into the bombing. The ISFFC was set up in 1991 under the Geneva Conventions. MSF says the coordinates of the hospital were well known and its bombing could not have made a mistake. A number of inquiries have been ordered by the U.S. Justice Department and the Pentagon, NATO and an American Afghan team. The spot was released by Draft Biden, a political action group not directly connected to the vice president. The 92nd admixtures a speech made by Biden about overcoming personal tragedy with Biden family photos called My Redemption. It ends with the appeal Joe Run. Supporters have encouraged Mr. Biden to challenge fellow Democrat Hillary Clinton for the Democratic nominations as Mrs. Clinton's poll numbers have declined. However, the 72-year-old Delaware native has questioned whether he has emotional energy to run after the death of his son Bill in May. Others say by entering the race so late, Mr. Biden may not be able to rally enough financial support to mount an effective campaign. The Prime Minister who will stand down before the next election said he wanted to tackle deep social problems and boost social mobility. He also announced dramatic planning reforms to increase home ownership and he launched a broadside at Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn accusing him of having a Britain-hating ideology. Mr. Cameron said he wanted his time to power to be remembered as a defining decade of our country, the turnaround decade, one which people will look back on and say that's the time when the tide turned, when people no longer felt the current going against them but working with them. In his speech, Mr. Cameron appealed to the center ground of British politics with long section on equality and said the Conservatives would keep our head as Labour lose theirs. Britain has the lowest social mobility in the developed world, Mr. Cameron said. Here the salary you earn is more linked to what your father got paid than in any other major country. He said, I'm sorry, for us Conservatives, the party of aspiration, we cannot accept that. The Home Affairs Minister are expected to approve measures including the detention of those who may abscond before they can be expelled. More pressure could also be brought to bear on many countries of origin to take people back. It comes as EU states grapple with a huge influx of asylum seekers. More than 600,000 people have arrived in the bloc so far this year, many fleeing war, poverty and persecution. BBC Europe correspondent Chris Morris says that after months of talks on how to redistribute tens of thousands of migrants, the EU is turning its attention to keeping unwanted migrants out and sending home those whose asylum applications are rejected. However, there is a limited amount that the EU as a whole can do as deportations are the responsibility of individual member states, he adds. A draft text produced for Thursday's meeting seen by Reuters news agency reads, the EU and its member states must do more in terms of return. Increased return rates could act as a deterrent to regular migration. EU foreign ministers along with delegations from Turkey, Jordan, Lebanon and Balkan states will join the talks later on Thursday to discuss ways of stemming the flow of migration. 
Turkey, Jordan and Lebanon are home to tens of thousands of Syrian refugees, many of whom have made their way to Europe. On Wednesday, French President Francois Hollande and German Chancellor Angela Merkel urged EU members to act together to tackle the migrant crisis. It comes after NATO member Turkey complained about Russian jets had repeatedly violated its airspace. Ministers are also expected to review a range of measures introduced in the wake of the Ukraine crisis. BBC defense correspondent Jonathan Marcus said the alliance aims to make clear it will respond to any challenge. NATO ministers are expected to express their solidarity with Turkey and also address increased concern among Baltic members following Russia's involvement in eastern Ukraine. UK Defence Secretary Michael Fallon is expected to announce that Britain is ready to make a long-term troop deployment to the Baltic Republics, our correspondent says, but he adds ministers are meeting amid a deepening sense of crisis. Russian warships in the Caspian Sea have launched rockets at the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant in Syria, which hit their targets. Russian President Vladimir Putin and Defence Minister Sergei Shoigu said in a joint television appearance. Russian efforts will be synchronized with the actions of the Syrian army on the ground and the actions of her air force will effectively support the offensive operations of the Syrian army, Putin said in the meeting with Shoigu on Wednesday. In addition to the air force, four warships of the Caspian flotilla have been involved. Shoigu added, adding the warships had carried out 26 cruise missile strikes against 11 targets. The intensity of the strikes is increasing. The missiles flew nearly 1,500 km over Iran and Iraq and struck Raqqa and Aleppo provinces in the north and Idlib province in the northwest, Russian officials said. ISIL has strongholds in Raqqa and Aleppo, while Al-Qaeda-linked Nusra Front has a strong presence in Idlib. Viewers, we'll take a short break. Stay with us. <laughs> Friends Development Ekti shopner thikana ekti sundor abashasthal Friends Development apnar shopner bastob rup dey Notun duplex apartment commercial building nirmaner jonno nirbhorjoggo ekti protishthan Friends Development Otadhunik design shorboshish projukti somonoy amader karmotatporta concrete cement ar ispater mozbut bandhone gore uthuk apnar bari Rodbeshti shoh shokol boritar biruddhe kori shothik treatment Apnar shohorer prime location e royeche amader apartment Apnar koshter jito taka ebong amader nirbhejal shrome nirmito hok apnar shopner bari ti apnar জীবন হোক সুন্দর এবং আনন্দময় আমাদের ঠিকানা ফ্রেন্স ডেভেলপমেন্ট 211 ইস্ট 43 স্ট্রিট সুইট বি 507 নিউ ইয়র্ক এনওয়াই 10017 ফোন 7188930020 ইমেল ফ্রেন্স ডেভেলপমেন্ট এট দ্য রেট অপটিমাম ডট নেট নিশা ট্রেডিং একটি আন্তর্জাতিক মানের গার্মেন্টস প্রোডাক্ট আমদানি ও রপ্তানিকারক প্রতিষ্ঠান ইউরোপ এশিয়া ও আমেরিকা সহ বিশ্বের নানা স্থানে বাইং মার্চেন্টাইজিং এবং ম্যানুফ্যাকচারিং করে থাকে সর্বাধুনিক প্রযুক্তিতে তৈরি বিভিন্ন ডিজাইনের পোশাক বাজারজাতকরণ এবং বিপণন এই প্রতিষ্ঠানের লক্ষ্য প্রতিষ্ঠানের বৈশিষ্ট্য উন্নতমান নিশ্চিতকরণ টেকসই পণ্যের নিশ্চয়তা নির্ধারিত সময়ে পণ্য সরবরাহ লেনদেনে স্বচ্ছতা ও বিশ্বস্ততা যোগাযোগের ঠিকানা ইউএসএ কর্পোরেট অফিস সতেরো সাতচল্লিশ থার্ড স্ট্রিট সুইট দুশো পনেরো জ্যাকসন হাইট নিউ ইয়র্ক এনওয়াই এক এক তিন সাত দুই বাংলাদেশ কর্পোরেট অফিস বাড়ি নং একশো পঁয়তাল্লিশ সপ্তমতলা রোড নম্বর বারো ব্লক জি দক্ষিণ বনশ্রী খিলগাঁও ঢাকা এক দুই এক We are back in a moment with the headlines here. Brazil auditors rejects Rousseff budgetary accounts. Bangladeshi origin Nadia Hussain crowned Great British Bake Off. Hillary Clinton voices opposition to Pacific trade deal. Volkswagen US boss told about emission cheat in 2014. Steve Blatter, FIFA president, facing 90-day suspension. Let's move to the next news. The government was accused of borrowing money illegally from state banks to make up for budget shortfalls. The opposition says the ruling by the Federal Accounts Court, which reports to Congress, paves the way for impeachment proceedings against Ms. Rousseff. She was re-elected less than a year ago but was record low popularity ratings. The Brazilian government says it would challenge Wednesday's ruling in the Supreme Court. 
The game is not over, said Attorney General Louis Adams. The minister who handled the case in the Accounts Court, Augusto Nordes, said the government disregarded fiscal and constitutional principles in the handling of the 2014 accounts. Ms. Rousseff's government raised funding without fiscal sustainability and without the required transparency, said Mr. Nordes. The irregularities amount to more than $26 billion, according to the court. If the decision is upheld by the Supreme Court, the government's account will be less than accessed by the Congress, where Ms. Rousseff's coalition has a majority. Bangladeshi RG Nadia Zamir Hussain has risen to the occasion or to be crowded the winner of this year's Great British Bake Off. Nadia 30 from Leeds picked a big fat British wedding cake adorned with jewels from her own wedding day as the showstopper in Wednesday's finale. Ian Cumming faltered when he forgot to add sugar to the dough of his spiced buns for the signature bake, and Tamil Ray struggled when the cream patisserie for his toffee and marmalade iced buns failed to sit in time. Nadia has become the sixth winner in the show's history. She said, bizarrely, I found the final one was the least scariest, and I really enjoyed the experience the most out of all filming days. I felt at that stage that I could do it really well or really badly. I had nothing to lose, so I went into the tent and gave it everything I could. The showstopper was a celebration cake, and as I never had my own wedding cake, I wanted a proper iced wedding cake. For the showstopper, the bakers were asked to create a classic British cake with at least three tires. Nadia, who did not have a wedding cake because she got married in Bangladesh, chose to bake her husband's favorite, lemon drizzle. Its stand was decorated in red, white and blue sari material. She said, at the very end of the filming, I took off the cake to my family's table and we all had a slice. So my husband and I did get our wedding cake after all. Nadia emerged as the winner despite coming last in the technical challenge in the very first episode. The landmark trade deal involves 12 countries among with the Pacific Rim, including the US, Australia and Japan. In an interview, Mrs. Clinton said the agreement left many unanswered questions and did not meet the high bar she had said. I'm not in favor of what I had learned about it, she told PBS. The former Secretary of State joins rivals for the Democratic presidential nomination, Bernie Sanders and Martin O'Malley, in opposing the agreement. The duel took five years to negotiate and covers 40% of the global economy. Michael Horn said he was told about a possible emission non-compliance in the spring of 2014. The revelation was made in testimony due to the presented to a House committee investigating the scandal on Thursday. He said he was told about the study by West Virginia University who has published. I was informed that EPA regulations included various penalties for non-compliance with the emission standards and the agencies can conduct engineering tests which could include DVD device and testing for analysis. He said, I was also informed that the company engineers could work with the agencies to resolve the issue. Mr. Hall said in the written evidence, it was not until 3rd September this year that Volkswagen told U.S. authorities about the different device in emission software in diesel vehicles for the model years 2019-15. to 15. Viewers, now the sports news. Members of FIFA Ethics Committee have recommended the sanction after the Swiss Attorney General opened criminal proceedings against the 79-year-old. He is accused of signing a contract unfavorable to football's governing body and making a disloyal payment to UFA President Michael Platini. Blatter denies any wrongdoings and his lawyer said he had not been notified of any action. European football chief Platini, who wants to succeed Blatter, has said the payment was valid compensation from his time working under the Swiss more than nine years ago. The investigative chamber of FIFA's ethics committee has requested the ban and had a final decision is likely to be made on Thursday by Hans Joachim Eckert, the head of FIFA's ethics educatory chamber. Former India cricketer and opener Navzot Singh Sidhu has been hospitalized in New Delhi after he developed a clot in his vein. However, his condition is reported to be stable. Mr. Navsud Singh Sidhu was admitted to Indraprastha Apollo Hospital's Delhi today evening with acute deep thrombosis. This is a life-threatening condition if not treated on time. Mr. Sidhu has put on blood thinners and had been recovering well. His condition is said to be stable as of now, said a statement issued by Indraprastha Apollo Hospital's authorities. DVT is caused by blood clot in deep vein which hinders the normal blood flow. The symptoms may include swelling, pain and tenderness often in the legs. However, Sidhu tweeted about his condition and said that all was well. Viewers, let's have a look at Millennium TV News Recap. 
Obama apologizes to MSF president for Kunduz bombing. Video urges Vice President Joe Biden to make 2016 run. David Cameron vows assault on poverty in conference speech. Migrant crisis EU to debate faster deportations. Syria crisis NATO to discuss Russia air campaign. You are up to date with our top stories so far here on Millennium TV. And don't forget to log into www.millenniumtv.net. Thank you and stay with Millennium TV. Allah Hafiz.